as I said, this book demonstrates that, that we are not as different as we like to think that we are. So what I'm going to go over real brief right now is what the attributes are of the good black woman. Since she's not on television, we may not recognize her. Okay. Now, the good black woman has seven attributes, and then I'm going to explain to you how to utilize those in your day-to-day -day life. The good black woman has self-discipline, courteousness, cheerfulness, self-respect, intelligence, cleanliness, and love. Now, we've heard those, that terminology. You know, it's like one of those where they tell you, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. What do that mean? You know, how, how can I make that functional in my day-to-day -day life to benefit me as a practice? It sounds like all theory. Where's the practicum? What do I do? The good black woman has self-discipline. That's self-control. Let me make that real for you, sisters. We can start with our mouth. The good black woman can control her mouth. She don't have to say everything that comes up. It's okay if he get the last word sometime. You know. She don't cuss in public. And she works on not cussing in private. She don't tear a man down with her mouth because they can't out-argue us. Can't nobody out-argue us. I have charged that we nag our men too much. We keep our men's head tied up so much with our petty grievances about our personal relationship that he don't have time to think and plan for our future. Because he got to deal with what's going to happen with us every day. You know, it's, it's real life. When the black man come home, he almost have to do a wind test or stick his toe in the door. He don't know what's waiting. He don't know who in that a day. He know it's a possibility that there's some kind of new monster that he didn't even know about the other day. <laughs> so, you know, we, we need to not make it like that. We need to not be so vicious with our mouth. You know, men are not petty like that. They're not going to out argue us. And it has been proven that verbal abuse is just as harmful as physical abuse. So let's not use our mouth to do that to him. The good black woman is courteous. She says, thank you, baby. I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate every effort you make. Try harder. I'm going to work with you. Thank you. I know you did your best. Now that's a whole new language. <laughs> but just to say that during the course of the day every day with the man that you're trying to be with or want to be with will make our life easier. We can't get it if we don't give it. We keep wanting them to give us and do something for us that we refuse to do and give to them. It don't work like that. The good black woman has self-respect. She don't have to go out naked just to get the attention of a man. I have sisters all over the country and they, and they come up to me uh, after the lectures and they'll be talking to me and they'll say, well, you know, uh, all he think about is sex. All he think about is my body. I say, why don't you show him something else? <laughs> and then here's the really good one. They'll come up and they'll have on uh, uh, a weave. They have on false eyelashes, another whole face, false fingernails, and all of that. And then they'll say, but I'm looking for a real man. <laughs> The good black woman can pull a dress down without thinking that it devalues her. She doesn't have to use her body because she has so many other good attributes about herself to get the attention of a man. We can take the sisters, the sisters in a position to take all of the charge uh, and sexual energy out of the black community by just dressing differently. We have the power and control over that. That don't stop you from being beautiful. Don't stop you from getting a man. 
And it certainly puts things on the right perspective so some other judgments can be made other than physical. It don't take no knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to have a sexual reaction. That's the most base. We spend less time doing that than anything else we do. Doing that than anything else we do. So, you know, that doesn't always have to be the forefront issue. We know we are capable of that. The good black woman has intelligence, meaning that she knows how to behave properly in the streets. She's not in the wrong place. Some of our women don't know what else to do other than go to the bar. They need some activities. Some of our women thinking that staying home on the weekend is some kind of sin. Some of our women think that if they don't have a new outfit to wear every day that they go self-destruct. You know, we, we have a lot of just that kind of nonsense going. Uh, every time we buy new outfits and clothes or whatever, all we're doing is sending money out of our community. We don't own no clothing stores. If the white man closed the shoe factory, we'd all be here barefooted tonight. We don't own no shoe factories. You know, very base things that we don't own that we put our money into and demand we have to have them. A lot of times our men look at us and know that he ain't never going to be able to make enough money to give us all of the things we say we want. And don't no man want to be with no woman who he constantly got to deny her the things that she says she wants. And that represents failure to him, to have to always, you know, not be able to provide us with what we ask for. One of the ways we can do that is to start being satisfied with less. You know, the good black woman is clean. Now that's a hard one. The good black woman tried to keep the house clean. Good black woman is clean by her own body. You know, a lot of those things we kind of take for granted, but all of our people don't know about that. There are people who are angry with me because I even describe the fact that some of us as sisters are, are, don't have the proper personal hygiene as if that don't exist. We have too much falsehood and pretense going about our condition. Everybody just dressed up ain't clean. the truth. We have to look at our condition in the light of truth. Stop reacting emotionally and pretending that just because we don't want to do one of the most difficult things that I deal with out here is trying to teach our people the difference between an actual fact and an opinion. Our people think that they can accept or reject truth based on how they feel about it. Your feelings don't change the truth. The truth is just going to be there. You can feel any kind of way you want to feel about it. Those are just, those kind of emotions have kept us from growing because anything we don't like, we just reject that and say, well, I don't believe that. That don't mean that it's not the truth. It just makes you a disbeliever. Hmm. The good black woman uh, practices non-possessive loving. Now, y'all know that's a hard one. <laughs> now, envy is wanting what someone else has. And jealousy, of course, is just selfishness. Uh... Non-possessive loving is not an easy one for us to practice. And, uh, of course, I have a lot of sisters and some brothers who are in disagreement with me saying that. But the actual fact is that our men are outnumbered about five to one. And nature is going to require that the men take responsibility for more than one woman and her children. Most of our men have children by more than one woman anyway. So I don't know why that was such a surprise, allegedly, when I said that. The black man has not been waiting on me to tell him he could have more than one woman. You know, I'm in agreement with the rest of y'all. I don't think he should do that, but I fell like you did. There are some things, perhaps, about the nature of our man that we have been given some definitions about that are not true. There are some things he can do that we call him a dog. We do not have the same capabilities as a man. I am not talking about fornication and adultery. That's something else. I'm talking about actual responsibility of fatherhood and husbandhood of another family. That's quite different from fornication and adultery. We don't have the same capabilities of them. That's right. A man can have two homes, two sets of in-laws. He can eat dinner at two houses, 
two sets of children, two garages, two separate sets of friends attached to that woman. He can have all of that. We can't do that. We can't cook dinner at two houses. We can't sleep with one man four nights a week and another one three. Ain't no man gonna agree with that. We can't have one set of children we leave in one place and go and stay in another place and take care of another set. It doesn't work for us. Now that does not mean that we can't have sex with more than one man. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just taking responsibility for your children. Now certainly every man can't take financial responsibility for all of his children. He can do something. But a man who is spending time with a child is going to do something for it. Because then they'll find out what we have since we've been taking care of them by ourselves. You don't like to always say, no, I can't do it. No, I ain't got it. So they, the children will make you get it up. You spend some time with it. You know, th that, that's an important thing. Uh, the effectiveness of the principles that I just described, their usefulness has not diminished just because modern opinion has changed about them. There is not a black man in this room who does not still enjoy it if this woman bake him a cake. Well, our young daughters are being raised and taught that that's old style and that's out of fashion. We are not making those rules. Somebody else is, and they're imposing them on us and making us think that we have to qualify under them. I tell the brothers, just like I tell the sisters, if you have a woman that you've been working with for months or years, and uh, you can't get that woman to get in agreement with your program, then get rid of her and get another one. And I tell the sisters the same thing. If you're with a man you can't agree with, don't make his life miserable. Get with a man you can agree with. But we spend too much time living in hell with each other. We spend too much time tearing each other down, trying to make the other person do different or function different. If you want somebody to change, first change yourself. We set the example. We are the teacher. We are the mother. We set the example.